Hey guys, uh, what we're gonna take a look at today is the final project requirements. So what I wanna do is walk you through what the project is, what it looks like, what you can expect on that. And then the um, infographics should be turned in. I think I, what I'm gonna do is walk you guys through dates. Um, oh, I don't even have an error on this. I'm really behind the ball this morning. Sorry about that. Um, so everything's gonna be due by the end of the seventh, uh, December 17th. So we are basically including this week, we have three weeks left. So today I'm gonna the final project. Next week is going to be a open lab just for you guys to like, I'm just gonna hang out and be here to answer questions for you guys if you have any. And then everything will be due to me via email by the end of class on the 17th. So let me walk us through the final project and then we'll take a look at the timeline and then I'll just have an open lab session for you guys to answer questions that you might have. So let me share my screen with you. There we go. You guys should be seeing that, right? All right, so. My edits here. All right, so if you guys click underneath projects, everything's ready to go for you. And then we're looking underneath final project. That's where this is just, and I just unlocked this yesterday. So what I wanna do is take a look at the project requirements, what I'm looking for. Um, there's a little video on how to embed an image into your Illustrator document. This is something we looked at during the tutorials, but I also want to make sure that you're aware of how this works because that's going to be one of the requirements for the project. And then I have some examples, and then there's a couple different tutorial styles or, or um, technique styles that I'm going to ask you to try. You're only going to be required to do at least to do one of them, but if you want to combine multiples, but I have folders full of different kind of content that you can check out and try those. So first up, let's take a look at the poster requirements. As we're going through this, if you have questions on anything, if something doesn't make sense, whatever, please shoot a message in the chat, speak up, let me know, just to make sure everybody's on the same page with all this. So, we'll open in a separate window so you can see a little bigger. So, the idea behind this is that you're gonna be creating a poster for an upcoming concert. Now, obviously, this is dramatically affected by the fact that there are no concerts right now. So what I'm gonna do is kind of extend this out. If you wanna do this for any sort of like live stream events, like I know that there's been a lot of bands doing just like live stream, kind of like fundraisers for themselves, for causes, that type of thing. Like I know one of my favorite bands is doing like a three night starting tonight through the weekend, um, live stream every night. So if you wanna do this for a live stream, that works really well. Otherwise, if you wanna do it for like your favorite comedian, performer, band um, for a 2021 tour, that's totally fine. I mean, I'm just obviously opening this way up because there's just not as much. Normally when this project's run, it's something that we do more along the lines of uh, like picking something from an upcoming event, that type of thing. But obviously that's not as much of an, uh, of an option for you guys right now. So what we're gonna do is take a look at creating a poster. And again, this can be for any upcoming event, live stream, whatever, you can kind of ignore that part for right now. And your poster should use at least one of these four following styles. So one of them is low poly. Another one is using negative space. Another is masking, we saw that as a technique. And then the other one is creating or using patterns. So these are these last two are definitely things we've done as parts of the tutorial. Negative space is more just kind of like a visual creative style. And low poly is very much a technique. And I have a couple of different tutorial sites and different kind of uh, walkthroughs that are really good for that. Now, your finished project should include a clear identification of who the band act is. Think about hierarchy. So you guys hopefully have taken the 103 class, if not, just thinking about like what works well in terms of like information display. So you want to start with the most important part as the biggest and then work down from there. So obviously like, yes, this is a live event, but the more important part isn't just that it's a live event, it's who's performing. So you want to think about that first. You also want to make sure you include date and time and any ticket purchase information. That can be something as simple as just, you know, papstheater.org slash tickets or something like that. Um, you'll need a use of an imported texture or some sort of non-vector image. So what that means is that you're going to find some sort of image, whether you're using Google Images, whether it's a background texture, whether it's an image that you're going to mask into uh, some text, anything like that. So with that, you're going to go in and embed. Sorry, my connection was cut out there. Um, so again, you're gonna embed that into your poster file. Now you'll need to import and use custom fonts. We've seen that on defont.com. And then you'll need cohesive and consistent use of the color model as well as swatches saved as an Illustrator file. So 
when you're working again we want to make sure that like we're maintaining that consistency of color throughout that you're not just randomly grabbing greens or blues or whatever but you're kind of maintaining that consistent color palette so far that makes sense as far as kind of what i'm looking for is the ask anything jumping out you guys all right now as far as your file setup this is pretty straightforward this is going to be an 11 by 17 document print intense Make sure that when you save, uh, when you create yours, that you're creating a 1 8 inch bleed. You're using at least one custom font. And that when you're done, save your fonts as outlines before you send me your Illustrator files. Remember, we can, you can select your fonts and then go to type and then create outlines. That way, I don't have to worry about managing fonts. I'm going to have, you know, there's 24 people in the class, and then each person might have multiple fonts. So that could be anywhere from like 24 to 60 fonts that I'd have to download and install on my machine. So remember, by creating outlines, it creates a workaround for that. Also keep in mind, if you save this as a PDF, that works real well too, because then I don't need those. Now you'll need clear use and execution of at least one of those four styles, and we'll review that in a second. If you did use a tutorial site, just send me a link along with it when you email me. I just wanna kind of take a look at like where you started and where you landed, just kind of see from a technique standpoint, you struggled anywhere. Your document should read clearly as a poster, so it should include all that relevant information, date, time, ticket prices, website, phone number, any of that kind of stuff that you think helps drive people to that. Now again, if you're doing a live stream, it could be included like that information specifically. Now as far as execution, your file should be created with a clean, finished look, it adheres to proper use of hierarchy, balance, color, color models, that type of thing. So that's really the big idea is what you're doing is you're creating this concert poster. Now I know it's one thing to talk about as a whole other thing for us to actually take a look at um, take a look at the kind of examples and that type of thing. So let me jump back into this. Now, here I have a video on how to import and embed images into your Illustrator document. I'm not going to sit and make you guys watch it with me. It's pretty straightforward. It's just dragging in and then making sure you select the image and hit the embed button up top. This is a quick review for it. What I have right here is a gig poster. It's just a, um, it's a poster that's been created for the PAPS Theater. Um, some of these are local illustrators. Um, there's actually a couple that I, that I know that have done some cool stuff for them over, the, over time. Um, some of these people you can just find on Instagram. Um, but you'll notice that these are very like abstract, very kind of like surreal stuff, lots of illustration, very stylized looking things. And you'll notice that there is kind of a combination of illustration and of photo quality images. So like this poster here, like this one for the National, really cool. And again, it's just an illustrated outline of the devil masked in against an image behind it with some sort of grading over the top of it. So that's really what's going on with these is that it's really very stylized look. And these are just, I mean, not necessarily that yours have to look like this, but it just gives you a sense of like what's being done for the Paps Theater. And a lot of these are actually being produced, again, locally. These are local artists that do these things and they create these very unique looks for this particular venue. So, let me jump back. Um, now, what I want to take a look at is a couple of these other ones. Let me let me change my screen to sharing. Sorry, it's sharing just a tab on my whole screen. Let me quick fix this. There we go. Okay, cool. There we go. Now are you guys seeing this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Sorry about that. I have some issues here. All right. So the four styles that I mentioned earlier, there's low poly, negative space, masking, and pattern. So I don't start off first with low poly. Low poly is really cool. You guys have probably seen this before. This is something that I've seen kind of grow in popularity over the last couple of years. Um, I've actually seen this like on the side of a couple of market theaters. They, they, they found a local artist who does it. Low poly is this idea that it's almost like these geometric shapes that overlay an existing image. So with this one, this actually works really well because what you can do is bring in a photo of the artist and then you're essentially drawing in triangles and applying colors to them and then using that as a styling kind of stamp reference point. And then you're just building those triangles and playing with a color palette that kind of shades out. So there's a couple different versions that I have on here. 
Um, this one I think works really well. But again, when you're looking at tutorials, they're not all created equally. Generally, I think tutorials that work off of um, YouTube videos or like video step by steps, I think they're a little bit easier to follow because they, they you see someone actually doing it. It creates a little bit more context. They kind of explain the steps a little bit more effectively. I think the ones that don't have that, that they're just kind of listed out step by step directions, there's a lot more room for error in there. So it tends to get a little more confusing. It tends to be a little more complicated. So as you're looking, any of these tutorials will work. And again, there's a lot of different styles. Some work a little bit faster than others, but again, it's just kind of a matter of digging around, looking at styling, and then clicking through and kind of feel, feeling through as far as directions. I've seen some really cool stuff done with this one. So that is low poly. There's a bunch of different examples I have posted here. So these kind of show you some examples of like what it could look like. And a lot of these I just found from Behance. There's a lot of really great artists. This is kind of a cool walkthrough just visually. It's just like a quick little animated GIF, but it shows you from a technique standpoint, you can actually see the vector points in Illustrator. So it starts with a photo, and then it's a matter of just kind of creating these lines as individual vector points. One tip I do have for you if you're going to use this technique is make sure you draw each individual shape as a complete as a completed enclosed path. So you want to click for three points, make every triangle, and you're going to basically just be building a ton of triangles. And then you can zoom way in, turn off snapping, and really make sure everything aligns nice and evenly. And then it's just a matter of to create that shading or create that depth. It's just color variation. So you can see here's a light to dark gray, light to dark, light to dark. So it's just one color with a lighter and darker version all around it to kind of create that shading effect. Kind of similar to what we did when we worked on our pixel art project. So it's kind of somewhere in the ballpark of, the, of those two things. So you should have a little bit of a frame of reference for it. Any questions on low poly or what that looks like? And this technique and this tutorial, I think creates a pretty good result pretty quickly. And again, this is just a quick walkthrough if you're looking for ideas of what that process might look like for you. So I think it definitely loads you up with a lot of different kind of tips, coloring options, framing, finishing touches, that type of thing. So that's low poly. Let me jump back in. And next one we'll take a look at is negative space. Negative space is more, it's less about a specific tutorial and it's more thinking about kind of like the visual aspects of whatever the artist may be. There's kind of some cool ones that I have here in the example to give you an idea. So like a, an alternative JAWS poster. These tend to be really, really simple. But here like the blood drop inside the scorpion tail, Pangea inside the dinosaur skull. So it's really just a matter of like looking at shapes. And again, when you're thinking about doing something like this, this actually is kind of perfect in terms of what this project is because here you're seeing custom illustration. Here you're seeing a use of a texture over later masked in. So you're seeing a lot of those different pieces all kind of cooked right into it. And there's a couple of different ones that I have for negative space examples. These can kind of be anything, but again, masking and negative space tend to work really well together. So you can see that how those two would kind of combine nicely. Again, that idea of negative space is creating a shape or suggesting an object and almost blending from one to another. So that's negative space. Third one is masking. Masking is pretty straightforward. We saw this in the past, we actually did this in class where we build an object and then, and then shift an image to sit inside the object. So like if you remember back to that cell phone lesson on layers. Now for this one, I think masking tends to work really well with text or with bigger, bolder shapes. So again, this is something that gives you an idea of like trapping that image. If you are gonna use text though, go big and bold with your font choices. The thicker the text, the better this reads. I do have a couple things here. So like creating clipping masks. This just walks you straight through everything. And again, this is all stuff that we did in class, but this is just kind of a quick hit review if you do wanna see that and you wanna try that. And then I also have this link here. It's just different ways of creating clipping paths, how to, how to make a mask, how to make it into a compound path, how to make multiples together. Just some different kind of tutorial based things. And I think these tend to make life a little bit easier. So if you are gonna look at that, this is probably worth a quick scan if you wanna try that masking technique. And then the final technique is just pattern. And really we've seen that. We saw the pattern maker when we did the lesson on gradient and pattern. Um, and patterns are pretty fun. This is a really cool one that was done by an artist as like spec work for Nike. Um, 
here they created a bunch of different objects and obviously this may be a little bit more complex like you don't necessarily need quite this many but they built a bunch of objects and then they created a pattern out of it and then once they had the pattern built then you could see like masking that against it so it kind of works really cool as a, as a different way of thinking and remember too you have that pattern maker that's built for you inside of illustrator so if you want to try and create like an alternate pattern like that one's pretty specific if you wanted to try and create something a little bit different and there's some really cool illustration work that's been done on some of these. And again, you can build any of these just by creating that simple little pattern maker. And there's a couple tutorials that I have as well, just posted up on here for you guys as just kind of reference. So again, if you wanted to use this as like background art and that you're gonna use like a big bold type and like a pattern in the background, sometimes even using like a textured image as an overlay where you just knock the opacity back a little bit or play with blending modes, that's kind of a fun way to do all this stuff too. So those are the four different techniques that I'd like to see you try at least one of them. And again, the reason I asked for one is just so you can kind of see a little bit of an extension of styling and a, a little bit of a, kind of a different approach to how you might build something than just opening up a document and throwing some things in it that, that might be a little bit more you know, traditional. So are there any questions on this? Mm -hmm. Nope. And again, this will be due uh, uh, two weeks from today. So you'll have next week as an open lab and then the final project will be due by midnight that night. The next two weeks are gonna just be open lab. So let me jump back into announcements here. If you guys haven't been checking, like I've been posting as we've gone week to week, like what we cover each week. And then if, uh, if there's any related videos that get posted here as well or inside the lesson folder. But here we are for final project intro. Next week's an open lab and the infographic will be due. I have a critique spot open for that. So you can start posting those there if you're ready. And then on the 17th, your final project will be due via email to me. And that's just by end of day. So any questions on that as far as timeline or what the ask is? Now, what I would recommend is if you have any missing work, jump in on that stuff right now. Get, done, get the missing work done before you move forward because I think like it all just kind of builds on itself. I think it's gonna make your, your life a lot easier instead of trying to tackle something more complex. Work from easy to hard. Um, and then as you're getting stuff wrapped up, if you do have missing work, please feel free to email me at as soon as you get it done just so I can get the grade books updated. I've been trying to stay on that and make sure that everybody's kind of seeing the most accurate version of the grade, especially these last two weeks coming up before uh, everything's due. So missing work. Get your infographic wrapped up and submitted, post it up to the message board, and then your final project will be due in two weeks. Next week, again, we'll have an open lab, so I'll just be hanging out answering okay. questions, and again, I'll be doing the same thing today. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be hanging around. Otherwise, I'm just gonna cut the recording for right now just to kind of wrap this up, and then um, I'll just hang out with you guys if you got questions and wanna hang out and show me where, where you're at with anything or get any clarification or anything. Any questions? Anything jumping out you guys? I have one question, Chris. Um, uh, would you like us to turn in the Illustrator files and the um, uh, PDFs? You can just send me the PDFs. Okay. Because remember, a PDF is something that I can open and edit in. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. That's right. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's get any other questions. Fire away. I'll just be hanging out in the room. <laughs>